acid-base theory and pH. So Arrhenius' acid-base theory essentially says that an acid is something that when you put it in water, it's going to dissociate, so it's going to dissolve and break apart. And when it does that, it's going to produce, which really means they're not coming from nothing, they're coming from the actual acid itself, so it's going to be releasing these hydrogen ions. A base, Arrhenius said, is that it's the same idea. You have the substance, and when you put it in water, it's going to release hydroxide ions. So that was Arrhenius' theory of acids and bases. Acid release hydrogen ions, and bases release hydroxide ions. However, when you put something like ammonia into water, what you see is that you get a pH above 7. And so ammonia acts like a base, but as you can see, there is no hydroxide ions in it. There's no way to get a hydroxide ion from ammonia itself. So it must not be just things that have hydroxide ions that can act as a base. So when you put ammonia into water, you get, sorry, I said ammonium, when you get ammonia into water, you get ammonium and hydroxide ions. So this is going to cause the pH to be higher. It'll be make the solution basic. However, there are no hydroxide ions in ammonia. They're not coming from the ammonia. So even though it can act as a base, it can act as a base even though there are no hydroxide ions. Bronson-Lowry acid-base theory fixed this problem, and so they stuck with the same idea as to what an acid was. They said an acid is something that can donate a hydrogen ion or release a hydrogen ion, as Arrhenius did. But they changed the definition of what a base was to, it's not the hydroxide that's doing it, is that the base is something that is able to accept hydrogen ions. And so as we saw with ammonia in the previous equation, it's able to take a hydrogen ion from water, leaving behind a hydroxide ion. So that's where the hydroxide is coming from, but it's the accepting of the hydrogen ion that makes the ammonia a base. Note that these hydrogen ions, these are all going to be aqueous solutions, so there's always going to be water around. The hydrogen ions don't stay by themselves for long. They're going to be combining with a, hydro, uh, a hydro, dihydrogen monoxide molecule, a water molecule. Um, and so this hydrogen ion, if it is released by an acid, it'll immediately grab onto a water molecule, forming H3O+, which is known as hydronium. So Really, when we're talking about hydrogen ions in solution, which we do sometimes when we're being lazy, we really mean hydronium ions because the hydrogen ions are actually attached to water molecules. So Arrhenius is acid, a Bronson-Lowry base. Um, they both, if they're to be an acid, they both have to have a hydrogen ion because they're releasing hydrogen ion. They have to have one to begin with. And so all acids are going to have these hydrogens in them. And often when we write the formulas, we put the hydrogen first to clarify that they are acids. But anything that can actually accept these hydrogen ions. And notice that a hydrogen ion is a proton, so you'll see either of those terms being used. Hydrogen ion, if you think of the Bohr-Rutherford diagram, take an electron away from it. And if it's a hydrogen, you move an electron away, all you're left with is a proton. So a positively charged hydrogen ion is a proton. So if you have a base, it is really just something that can accept a hydrogen ion. And that's what Bonson Lowry defined as a base. Not something that has an OH on it, but something that can actually accept hydrogen ions. OH itself would be able to accept hydrogen, ion, but it's not the only thing. So acid-base reaction is essentially a reaction that involves this transfer of a hydrogen ion. Since you have an acid that has it, and it moves it over to the base. So in this case here, if we had HCl, it has a hydrogen ion. You put it into water, that hydrogen ion moves over, and you end up with a hydronium ion and a chloride ion. So this is your acid-base reaction. In this case, water is actually acting as a base. If hydrogen, if water is accepting hydrogens, according to bronson lowry that means it's acting as a base. If it's donating hydrogens, which it can also do, then it would be acting like an acid. Anything that donates hydrogens is an acid. Anything that accepts hydrogens is a base. So neutralization reaction essentially has this occurring um, with some other parties involved as well. So an acid is going to react with a base, and the acid is going to be donating the hydrogen ion. The base is going to be picking it up, and it could be directly um, like ammonia does, or it could be using its hydroxide, cause just because it, it has a hydroxide, it is also going to be a base. Um, not that that's the only thing that can be a base. But the hydrogen is going to come off the acid, and it is going to be picked up by something. And in this case here, it's going to be a hydroxide that is either directly released by the base, or in the case of ammonia, indirectly released by the base. So simple example would be hydrochloric acid. And again, this would be aqueous. Sodium hydroxide, also aqueous. 
Think of it like a double displacement reaction. The hydrogen is going to switch places with the sodium. And so now the sodium and the chloride are together, though they'd be dissolved in water, so they're not really together. Um, but the hydrogen and the hydroxide are now actually together as a molecule of water. So if you were to imagine what's actually happening in this reaction, since the chloride, if this HCl is already aqueous, and the sodium, if this NaOH is already aqueous, they're already in solution as ions, and they end up in solution as ions. So really, you could just pretend that they are not there, because they're not doing anything, they're spectator ions. So if you were to write the net ionic equation for this reaction, ignore the chlorides, ignore the sodiums, they're there, just not doing anything. Really, it is a hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion coming together to form water. That's essentially what's happening in a neutralization reaction. There are different types of acids and bases, and we are going to be talking about whether they are strong acids or whether they are weak acids with a quick mention to bases. So strong acids, essentially what that means is they dissociate completely. That means if you put a gazillion of them into water, all of them would break apart. Um, think of acids as being kind of like ionic compounds and kind of like molecules. We know that you put a molecule into water, it doesn't break up. You put an ionic compound into water, it does break up. Acids are kind of in the middle. And there are ones that do act almost as if they're like completely ionic compounds and they do completely break up, those will be the strong acids. And since they're completely dissociating, they're going to give you a lot of hydrogen ions, which get picked up by water, giving you hydronium ions. Those are strong acids. So hydrochloric acid, when you put it in solution, you can imagine if you put these things in here and they would start out as a molecule, but when they go into water, because they are a strong acid, they are going to completely break up. So if you put in I only bothered drawing three here, but imagine three gazillion of them. Um, all of them are going to split apart into their ions. Now, since there's already water in solution, the hydrogen ions are going to end up with a water molecule. Each hydrogen ion picks up or joins with one water molecule. And so we get those hydronium ions. Though if you're being lazy, you just say hydrogen ion, hydrogen ion, hydrogen ion. But really, they do get attached to water. And then you end up with the chloride ions as well. Every single one of them, or pretty much anyways, has dissociated and gone into water. This gives you lots of hydronium ions, or hydrogen ions if you're being lazy, and therefore hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. Weak acids don't do that. They're more like molecules. They don't fully break up. Some of them will, some of them won't, and so you have some dissociation happening. You get fewer hydronium ions because fewer of them are breaking up, and therefore these are referred to as weak acids. So acetic acid is one of these weak acids. If you put three gazillion of them into solution, only a portion of them would actually have the hydrogen separate from the acetate, and then it would join a water. And again, if you're being lazy, you'd ignore that fact um, and just say it's a hydrogen ion, but really it's hydronium ion. The other ones are going to stay together, and it's like 99 of them are going to stay together, and one of them is going to break, break apart. Depending on which acid you're talking about, that'll happen to different levels. Really weak acids, they do very little of that dissociation. As the acid gets stronger and stronger, the amount of dissociation increases. Hydrochloric acid increases so much that you'd refer to it as a strong acid. Bases are going to act similarly in that they could pick up a lot of hydrogen ions or they could not pick up as many hydrogen ions. And so again, to the extent to which they do their base thing in terms of picking up these hydrogen ions, um, if they do it a lot, they're referred to as strong bases. If they don't do it as much, they're referred to as weak bases. To know which ones are strong acids, essentially these six here are strong acids, perchlorate being the toughest one to name, um, and so they will essentially fully dissociate, or enough that we would assume it's full dissociation. Bases, any base that actually produces or releases these hydroxide ions into water, so like all the group one hydroxides, very soluble, they'll release all their hydroxides into water, um, they're going to be strong bases. Other than that, other things like ammonia that we saw, it doesn't pick up all of the hydrogen ions it could, and therefore it's not a strong base. But group one hydroxides are your common strong bases. You may see things like calcium or, or barium hydroxide as well, though some other hydroxides are not very soluble, so you don't really have them having those hydroxides in water. Group one hydroxides, like sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, those are strong bases. pH is essentially a measure of how many hydrogen ions are in the solution. So we refer to it as the power of hydrogen. We should probably put a little plus there, and then we should say, well, that's not right. We should say pH 3O plus. That would be a better name for it. Um, but no one likes to look at that, so we say pH instead. This 
hydronium ion, and if you're being lazy, you'd say hydrogen ion, um, this concentration has a huge range. So you can imagine going from like 10 moles per liter all the way down to 1 times 10 to the negative 15, right? Like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 moles per liter. So that is a huge range. And a lot of people don't know what moles are. Um, and so this idea of saying, okay, I want to talk about where in this range the number of hydrogen ions there are. A, you've got some crazy numbers to work with. B, most people don't know what moles are. And so trying to communicate the acidity of a solution or how basic a solution is to someone who does not have a sufficient level of chemistry knowledge is going to be somewhat difficult. This is why Soren Sorensen devised what is referred to as the pH scale. So he said this range of concentrations is ridiculously complicated for most people. So what we'll do is we're going to turn it into a logarithmic scale. And hence, we now have the pH scale. So he said pH turned into logarithmic scale. It's actually inverse. So it's negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. Now, that's the kind of lazy way we didn't really know the hydrogen ions were joining on the water molecules forming hydronium, um, but now we do know that. So we can say pH is actually the negative log of the hydronium ions. And again, you could just say hydrogen ion if you're being lazy. Um, and this is in square brackets because we want this to be in moles per liter. So whatever the concentration in is moles per liter. If you take the negative log of that number, you will have the pH. For example, if a solution had a hydronium ion concentration, and again, that's in moles per liter, it's at 25 degrees, um, and it is one times 10 to the negative seven moles per liter, what is the pH? So you would take your calculator, um, or if you really knew log scales, you wouldn't need it, um, but you're gonna take the negative log of this concentration here. So we're taking the negative log of one times 10 to the negative seven, and that would give us our pH of seven for this particular solution.